Today I'm starting a new series called Apple Home 101, where I'll walk you through building a rock solid Apple Home smart home from the ground up. And we're beginning with the most critical piece of all your home network. Let's go. After years of creating smart home content and building out my own setup, I've learned that smart homes are very much like a real house. Without the right foundation, everything eventually falls apart or at least leaves you with a big mess to clean up. So with this series, I wanna share my complete blueprint for planning and building a DIY smart home that won't need rebuilding in a year or two or five. I'll cover strategies I wish I'd known from day one, many of which I'm just now implementing to fix my own smart home mess. Whether you're just starting or trying to get your existing smart home on the right track, this video series is your roadmap. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Shane and this channel is all about helping you build an easy Apple home smart home with new videos and live streams published every week. Today's video is about getting started and establishing a solid network as the foundation of your smart home. In part two, we'll be talking about selecting and setting up your HomeKit hubs and covering different wireless protocols, which I think is really important to understand when purchasing new smart home devices. And in part three, we'll be creating an organization system that keeps everything running smoothly as your smart home grows. I'll share tips and tricks that I've learned to really help you with your smart home journey. We'll talk about scenes, automations, naming conventions, all that stuff in that video. And then there's gonna be a bonus fourth video showing you ways to take your Apple Home smart home to the next level when you're ready to get a little bit more advanced. By the end of the series, you'll have the knowledge to build a smart home system that's reliable, responsive, and future-proof. So let's start with arguably the most important piece of the puzzle, one often overlooked when getting started, your home network. I know it's tempting to just get some smart lights or locks or whatever and start using them with your phone or with your home. But if you have any real plans of building a true DIY smart home, you wanna first establish a solid Wi-Fi network in your home. Trust me, this is much easier to do upfront before you have a lot of devices on your network. Getting this right from the beginning will save you countless hours of troubleshooting and frustration down the road. So let's start with the foundation, choosing the right router. Now, in my opinion, there are really two main approaches to consider when choosing a router for your smart home. Now, option one, the simple setup. If you want something that's easy to configure with minimal effort, a quality mesh Wi-Fi system is your best bet. Eero, Netgear Orbi, TP-Link Deco are some options just to name a few. These systems offer quick setup through smartphone apps, pre-configured security settings, automatic updates, and good coverage through multiple access points without having to run ethernet wires through the house. And option two is the more advanced control. If you're feeling a bit more ambitious and don't mind doing additional configuration and stuff like that, for this, I'd strongly recommend Unify. Now, something like Unify offers complete network control and customization, advanced security features, better long-term expandability, and more detailed insights into your network. I personally now use Unify in my home, but I've used many of the simpler systems in the past, and they work great too. Your choice really depends on your comfort level with networking and how much control you want. You might also want to consider how deep down this rabbit hole you think you might go in the future, Having full control and more detailed insights into your network can really be helpful for troubleshooting and organization. But if you wanna keep things simple, there is nothing wrong with using those out of the box, plug and play mesh Wi-Fi systems. Now as for Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6C, or Wi-Fi 7, if budget allows, I'd recommend getting the latest Wi-Fi standard for future-proofing. One nice thing about Unify is that you have to get your cloud gateway or router and your access points separately. And because of this, you can easily swap out your access points in the future if you want to take advantage of a newer Wi-Fi standard without having to switch out your main router. For example, if you have Wi-Fi 5 access points, you could later change those out with newer Wi-Fi 7 access points without having to replace your entire router as you'd have to do with those other plug and play mesh systems. Regardless of which system you choose, there are some key things to think about when setting up your network. First is the Wi-Fi bands. You'll probably want both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. 
Most smart home accessories connect over the 2.4 gigahertz band. Some devices though, like cameras, thermostats, and streaming devices may use the five gigahertz band. Newer Wi-Fi systems also offer a six gigahertz band, which is great for future proofing. More and more devices like phones and computers can utilize that six gigahertz band. But again, most smart home devices will connect over the 2.4 gigahertz band. And without getting too deep into the weeds, there are some notable performance improvements to your 2.4 and five gigahertz bands with newer systems like Wi-Fi 7. So if budget allows, getting something like Wi-Fi 7 might be beneficial down the road. A little bonus tip, you will want to make sure that you have IPv6 enabled on your network. IPv6 is required for Matter smart home devices, which is something that we'll talk a little bit more about in the next video. Next, let's talk about network separation. Consider creating a dedicated IoT network or VLAN for your smart home devices. This will keep your smart devices separated from your personal devices for added security. Unfortunately, many smart home devices just aren't very secure, so segmenting those from important devices like iPhones, tablets, and computers is a good idea. Many newer mesh systems include this feature built in and come with a dedicated IoT network already configured. With systems like Unify, you can create custom VLANs and firewall rules for even more security. And because most smart home devices will connect to the 2.4 gigahertz band, many people do like to create a dedicated 2.4 gigahertz only IoT network specifically for their home devices now, personally, I've just always used a combined 2.4 and 5 gigahertz um, network for my smart home devices, and that's worked just fine for me. And we're not gonna dive too deep into specific configurations for any one system today, but if you are using Unify for an Apple Home setup, I'd recommend checking out Terry White's video on configuring your network specifically for an Apple HomeKit setup. I'll put a link to that in the video description. Now here are some things to consider regarding placement of your router and access points. First, connection type. Hardwired connections between access points and the main router are always best when possible, regardless of which router you use. Now if ethernet runs aren't possible in your home, look for systems with a dedicated wireless backhaul. This is a dedicated Wi-Fi band that is used exclusively for communication between the access points and the main router. These have gotten quite good over the past few years and it's the next best thing if you cannot hardwire your access points or mesh Wi-Fi nodes. Next, consider strategic placement. Consider areas where you'll have smart devices in your home. That can even include outside areas like the front or backyards or the garage. Avoid placing access points near large metal objects. Place your router centrally when possible and add access points throughout the home for good coverage. For larger homes, multiple access points are going to be essential for good coverage. My house is about 2,100 square feet and I currently just use two Unify U7 Pro access points in my home. You can use a speed test app to check the Wi-Fi signal throughout your home. Pay special attention to areas where critical devices will be located. But again, I would recommend trying to get solid speeds throughout the entire home and eliminate any dead zones so you don't have to worry about connection issues for smart home devices that you may want to add in the future. Unify and other manufacturers offer planning tools where you can upload your floor plan to ensure you have good coverage at every corner of your home. So you might wanna check out something like that when you're planning your network. A few final things to keep in mind. One, ethernet ports. Think about how many wired devices you might need to connect. Smart home hubs like Philips Hue, Lutron, etc., will often require a direct connection to your router. If you do get a router without enough ports, you can always get a network switch if you need to add additional ports in the future. And two, power over ethernet. Some devices can be powered through ethernet cables alone, like PoE cameras and hubs. And this does require a PoE capable router or switch. And then lastly, look at your internet service plan from your internet service provider. Your router speeds and your home network will only be as good or as fast as the speeds you're getting from your ISP. 
If you're lucky enough to have gigabit fiber or higher in your area, then you're in great shape. But even if not, you can still establish a Wi-Fi connection throughout your home, perfectly suitable for running a smart home. But a good router from a reputable brand will definitely help you get the best speeds from your internet service providers. Again, just plan it out well in the beginning and try to blanket the entire home with the best signal you can, eliminating any dead zones. Then you can get to the fun part, adding smart home devices. Setting up a solid network for your smart home isn't the most exciting part of the process, but it's arguably the most important. Get this foundation right and everything you build on top of it will be more reliable and easier to manage, trust me, do this early on if possible. If you're interested in exactly what I'm using currently for my home network at the time of this recording, I have a Unified Dream Machine Pro Max. That's my cloud gateway or router. I have that connected to a Unified Pro Max switch. This gives me many power over ethernet ports for hardwiring devices. And for Wi-Fi, I have two U7 Pro access points which require power over ethernet. I'll link everything down below in case you're interested. Again, you don't have to go this route. A simple plug and play mesh system from Eero, Netgear, Orbi, or any other decent brand should work just fine also, as long as you consider everything we've discussed in this video. In the next video of this series, we'll be covering smart home hubs and protocols. I hope you understand Apple Home Hub options, how they work with the network that we just set up, and the critical role they play in your smart home. We'll also explore matter and everything you need to know about that, as well as the different wireless protocols that your smart home devices will use like Zigbee, Thread, and much more. I think all that is very important to understand when choosing which smart home devices to purchase. So you don't wanna miss that video. And later we'll cover getting started with scenes, automations, tips, and best practices for setting up and organizing your smart home, and even some advanced ways you can take your smart home to the next level. If you have any questions about setting up your network, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what router system you're using or considering for your smart home. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.